Well, we begin with former President Trump's big win in New Hampshire. First time it's happened since 1976. A candidate took both New Hampshire and Iowa in an open primary. That happened last night. But the media, they had a rather interesting decision to double down on not showing President Trump's victory speech in full. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kayleen McEnany. Here is my co-host, Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, former GOP gubernatorial candidate and host of the Tudor Dixon podcast, Tudor Dixon, and former Biden campaign surrogate, Kevin Walling. Well, the former president took to the stage last night to celebrate his win over Nikki Haley. We are going to win this. We have no choice. If we don't win, I think our country is finished. I do. I believe our country is finished. We have an opportunity to do something so amazing. But MSNBC stuck to their decision not to air Trump's remarks in full, instead adding live fact checks from, wait for it, Russia collusion, Rachel Maddow. So this is part of the issue here. Uh, so Donald Trump saying that he won New Hampshire um, not only in previous primaries, but that he won New Hampshire in the general election um, is not true. So uh, the former president has opened his remarks tonight once again by proclaiming um, falsehoods. This is what makes it hard to take him, uh, his pronouncements live. We'll try again, though. And then over on CNN, oh, Jake Tapper, will he cut Trump off, too? He brought in a fact checker and joked about not running the speech in its entirety. I heard at least two or three things uh, that need fact checking. Uh, Daniel Dale. All right, uh, Daniel Dale, uh, if we'd run the whole speech, maybe you would have had more to do. But did the ever present fact checker, Daniel Dale, did he fact check these tall tales from President Biden? My education for real in the black church. And that's not hyperbole, it's a fact. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto. Matter of fact, for four years, I was a full professor at the University of Pennsylvania. I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community at home. Harris, so we had our brain room check this out, and we could not find a, a live instance. Yes, Daniel Dale has fact-checked Democrats, but we couldn't find an instance where they just cut off Biden in the middle of a speech and said, fact-check right here, right now. Let's not listen to him. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was an opportunity just in the last 24 hours. I mean, during he, he was in Virginia and he said, you know, the real governor McAuliffe, full well knowing. And I know that everybody saw oh, that must have been a joke. Well, ever was it a joke? Because it was calling into question the election. And we know we know who the, the governor is. Um, Glenn Youngkin did well in that state. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, he gets a pass. We understand that. But here's the bigger question. When he talks about the border, those are lies, too. Mm. <laughs> and they are welcome to fact check any time they would. The border is open. And every time he says it's not, we should then turn our cameras on the border live side by side with them. And every network should do that. While he's speaking, show the border. Yes. Because just last week, he said it's been this way for 10 years. We showed you the chart last week. It has not. It's gotten significantly worse on his watch. But look, this is the strategy with President Trump. They're going to continue to cut him off. They will muzzle him. This is what they did after Iowa. Watch this one. At this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as it happens. There is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. His remarks tonight will not air here live. Donald Trump declaring victory with a historically strong showing in the Iowa caucus. Yeah, and Jake Tapper went on to say, you could hear him speaking under my breath. I'm paraphrasing Jake here, uh, and he characterized him as giving anti-immigrant remarks rather than letting the American people hear. Emily, this is the strategy, though. They will not let you hear from what is likely the nominee of the party, which is why I think the legal press conference strategy is so smart. They can't resist taking his appearances in front of courtrooms, so that is going to become his venue for talking to a wider audience. And remember, over the last years, 
Trump has occupied so much real estate. It, he, he's always coming out of their mouths. He's always the subject of their attention, whether or not they're actually muting him. So the irony is that despite their best efforts to actually quell his particular and personal speech, they're actually giving him all the attention that not only he deserves, but also that he wants. And it, it, what kills me, too, is that in the fairness, an interest of actual objective fairness, every time that they do call out the president, it is the current president, it is in such a lukewarm fashion. Remember when CNN ran a fact check of the current president, and they opened it by saying, unlike his uniquely dishonest predecessor, they ran a huge three-paragraph explanation that, well, while Biden sort of engages in falsehoods, he is nothing like the serial falsehood person, meaning President Trump, that gave essentially fact checkers a 24-hour-a-day job. And then they concluded by saying, that being said, here's some stuff that Biden has engaged in. And it was the tip of the iceberg. And the biggest point was the unscripted point, which is that any time Biden opens his mouth, he absolutely engages in tremendous falsehoods that have been swept under the rug as gaffes. And yet he still, to your point, is given the microphone because he still, for some reason, affords and commands the respect of the office that President Trump should equally hold from the left-wing media. And there is a reason why everyone following Trump says, well, he listens to me and I will listen to him. You know, Tudor, and you run for statewide office. You ran for governor. I, what do you do if your local media just blacks you out and says, no, we black out on Tudor Dixon, you can't hear from her? Well, I personally sort of love this approach because I see them doing this, and I think anytime you ban someone from seeing something, they want to see it more. Yes. They get more <laughs> excited. And and Trump has a, a unique political movement that is more old school, where people are passing pamphlets and talking, you know? So that makes them even more likely to say to their neighbor, hey, have you seen what they're doing to him? This, there's something up with this. Why do they want to hide him from us? And so I think it gives him power. I think they're feeding right into him and they don't even realize it. It makes me sort of sit back and chuckle at how silly they are. Yeah, it could backfire for sure. I want to play the deputy campaign manager of the Biden campaign, Quentin Falks. He has had some really interesting tall tales. There were no live fact checks. There were when he came on Fox News, but watch this. Well, first of all, Brett, what I would say about uh, immigration is that we have to look back. Donald Trump had four years uh, to do something on the border, um, and he did nothing. I'm sure it's, uh, you know, not good for them to talk about an economy that's booming with job creation up, uh, consumer sentiment up, inflation going down. It's much easier for them to talk about age than it is to talk about those things. You know, Brett Baer challenged him with some of the facts about the border. But in that second interview, he, he literally said, we don't we talk about his age to distract from the booming economy. Tell that to the 30 percent approval rating for Biden on the economy and the 70 percent who say it's not booming. Listen, Kaylee, I, I'm a Democrat on this couch. I think we should take Donald Trump live in all of his uh, uh, conversations, in all of his speeches, uh, because I think, you know, as we saw last night from uh, New Hampshire, uh, instead of actually extending a hand to Nikki Haley supporters, independents, he doubled down on vitriol targeting her. Uh, that was not a general election speech. That was a primary speech. And I think he did more harm focusing on Nikki Haley and not on the general election. So I spoke out uh, clearly about this to Fox News Digital earlier this, this week. The former president is newsworthy. Now, you can do fact-checking on the current president, the former president, but you shouldn't mm -hmm. not take him live because, again, uh, he, he is newsworthy and uh, people should be able to see what he is saying. Right. The presumptive nominee of a party. 100%. And it's very simple. The American people, they get a vote. Let them hear. Let them make the decision. Not Jake Tapper, not Rachel Maddow. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.